For AZPM, I'm Mark McLemore, and this is Arizona Spotlight. Coming up, explore the differences between the way we see ourselves and how others see us through a unique collaboration that created a gallery show called Face to Face. Meet Ingrid Griffith, who tells the inspiring life story of Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman to serve in the U.S. Congress. It's her one-woman show coming to the Invisible Theater, unbossed and unbowed. And go backstage at a rehearsal for Alice by Heart, an ambitious musical starring a high school cast that explores loss and loving in both the war-torn London and the fantastic realm of Wonderland. Those stories are next on Arizona Spotlight. Artworks is a special outreach program that is housed in the Sonoran Center for Excellence in Disabilities at the University of Arizona, part of the Department of Family and Community Medicine. It offers all-day arts and creative interactivity between adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities, their teachers, and students at the University of Arizona. Together, they create a safe space for expression, connection, and growth, where everyone is encouraged to follow their vision and their abilities. But that doesn't cover the sense of friendship and fun that the artworks artists share, and they give freely to anyone who gets to know them. I visited with our friends at Artworks a few times before, and so I was eager to join them at one of their big annual events, a public art show that this year was called Face to Face. The idea was to pair up the Artworks artists with students in the UA Department of Art and Visual Education to blur the line between portraits and self-portraits, between making art and being art, and to explore how we see ourselves and how others may see us. I'm Carissa Descindio. I'm an associate professor in art and visual culture education in the School of Art at U of A. This is a long-term collaboration. Um, My class has worked with artworks a few times now, but this was the first time we were together making art for the whole semester, which was really nice. Everybody is willing to work with you and to get to know you and the art comes from a really authentic place. In the um, frame ahead of us we see um, a couple of cloth dolls that are wearing very specific clothing and decorated and one of the dolls is holding a smaller doll. So who created this piece and what can you tell me about it? So Kara Lee and Ever created this and they paired up. Ever was in my class and Kara Lee is an artworks artist and they realized that they both had a love of sewing and creating dolls and so they decided to instead of drawing or painting a portrait they decided to sew dolls of each other Um, and, and I love the little details because as soon as I looked at the doll of Ever I knew it was it was them. She has it very finished. curly hair yeah. and it's a very specific color and her doll has that replicated so it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Brad is a longtime friend of Arizona Spotlight. Yeah. Every time I've done a story about artworks I've seen Brad and we've worked with each other so what did he contribute this year? So this is, is Brad's and Brad was paired with Hannah um, and what Brad shared about Hannah, Hannah always has headphones on and and listens to music. Oh, and Brad's here, so maybe, do you want to talk a little bit about What did you think when you saw the portrait of you? Um, I like, I like me like, I like faces. I think she did a good job of capturing you. Yeah. How was it for you to draw someone and then show it to them? Was that, did that make you nervous or were you happy to show what you created? I'm happy. Good deal. You should be. Okay, so we're with the artist Vicky Pisano. She's been on Spotlight before. Tell us about the work that you did this time. Who was your partner and what did My you do? My partner is Griffin and he, we swapped pictures together and he drew me and I drew him. <laughs> what did you think when you saw the picture of you? Did you think that it captured anything about your spirit? My spirit um, portrait art was a really complicated one. The heart is like almost like stained glass to me. Uh-huh. That's why I filled it in. Uh-huh. And um, and I have 
my title, my portrait artist, my favorite things. It has the drama, uh -huh. music notes, and my dad's Christmas chocolate chip cookies <laughs> he used to make. That's awesome. Do you think that this project has been a good one for everyone to see themselves in a new way or to learn about how other people see them? Um, that's a hard question. Yeah. But for you, was it good to see how other people see you? Yes, I love when people come and um, make comments for my um, art, and I really please appreciate it. Hi there. Could you introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Tiffany Jackson. I am the mom of Jamel. Hi, Jamel. Hello, my name is Jamel Texera. I am one of the artists at Artworks UA. Really appreciate you coming over. Sure. Did you have some art in the show? Today? Oh, yes, I do. So, Please take me to it. Yes. I got you right. Your partner was a girl named Emma? Yes. Uh -huh. and, and then... What was the first thing that you started with when you created her portrait? She drew it out, but the first thing I started off was the skin tone, because I'm not the best at it, but I try to experiment with it, try to get it as accurate as I can. So what I used was three colored pencils, mainly to get the um, colors right. Then I know she wanted to involve um, Arizona in her picture. So I actually decided to add a little additions to her portrait. So even though you can't see that, I had like a bicycle trail and all that. And then she made a sun drawing in the back. So what I did was kind of use it, make that base the Arizona flag. Yeah, yeah. Color it based around that. It's and, lovely. And now your portrait, you have a very serious look on your face. Oh, yeah. It gives me Wakanda vibes, you know. I'm, I'm a big Black Panther that. fan. Okay. But all, you know, it's not a panther specifically, but behind him, we got the best, <laughs> uh, one of the best apex predators on Earth history. We got uh, Allosaurus behind my portrait. Um, if y'all don't know that, I'm a big dinosaur nerd. I'm going to say that, um, <laughs> yes, it's one of the best apex predators known to man. Absolutely. Well, great. I'm going to ask your mom about her reaction to things. Okay? Sounds good. All right. Terrific. So tell me what you thought when you came into the gallery and you saw the art hung on the walls. I am so impressed by all of the kids. It's just amazing to see their growth. We've been to a few different events now and it's just amazing to see what they can do. There's a piece that's down there that if you looked at it, you would think that it was an Anne Marie Matisse. It's just really great to see. Yeah. How important is art to Jamel? Is it, has it been something that he's always invested his time and energy into? Jamel? When he, w he was diagnosed as autistic when he was about two years old. And they told us that Jamel would not speak. They said he was nonverbal. And as you just saw, that was a big old Boy, they were wrong. Right. So one of the uh, coping mechanisms that we had for him to soothe when he would have anxiety was I would sit him down and we would color together. And then it got to the point where if he would get upset, he would sit himself down. So that became his way to stress relief, self-soothe, and just kind of let things melt away. He's flourished so much. He has his own web page. He's trying. To, he takes commissions. He does amazing things. And I'm just happy that he's doing something that he loves and not something that he has to do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very, very proud of him. I think that it is so important for kids to have a support system and to have people that understand that the way they think is not different. It is super special. Um, and it's just amazing to see the support that they get from the art department and the community. Um, every time I come to these events, it's it's just more and more people. So it's impressive to see and it's, it's so important to them. The Gallery Show Face to Face, a collaboration between the University of Arizona School of Arts, Art and Visual Education program, and the artists from Artworks. It's available to see through January 26th in the Bio 5 building on the U of A campus at Helen Street. There are some photos of the artists and their work on the Arizona Spotlight page at azpm.org. During the most turbulent and transformative years of the 20th century, Shirley Chisholm, a former schoolteacher from New York, was the first black woman elected to the United States Congress and became a pivotal figure. She served seven terms in the House of Representatives and was unwilling to toe the line on institutional racism and sexism. Chisholm stood proud among her peers and remains an inspirational figure to this day. 
Actor and author Ingrid Griffith brings Chisholm's story to life in an interactive and immersive one-woman show called Unbossed and Unbowed, which the Invisible Theater is presenting this weekend at the Berger Performing Arts Center. I spoke with star Ingrid Griffith about how her multifaceted portrait of this great American came to be. In 2015, I decided to research Shirley Chisholm. I saw a documentary about her and was very curious about how she got there, how this Black woman made it onto the national political stage, running for president, and before that, becoming the first African-American congresswoman. And I was surprised I didn't know a lot about her. And as I was researching her story, I was doing this while I was also performing a one-woman show about my immigrant experience. I started going to the Schomburg in Harlem, Brooklyn College, where Shirley Chisholm went and her papers were there, and just started digging. And the more I was digging, the more I was discovering, the more I became in awe of Shirley Chisholm. And there were similarities about us. Uh, She was African-American. She was born in Brooklyn, New York. But her parents were immigrants. Uh, Her mom was from Barbados, and her dad was from Guyana, and I am originally from Guyana. My ancestors left Barbados to go to Guyana looking for work, so I am also of um, Barbadian heritage. There was so much to Shirley Chisholm that I was really, really ready to start writing. It just pushed me to write a one-woman show about her. We look back at the trail that Shirley Chisholm blazed. She ran for president in 1972. She didn't really think that she would win the nomination, but she wanted to make a difference, and she wanted to make sure that her delegates at the 1972 Democratic National Convention would not be there in vain, that they would work Mm -hmm. for change with the eventual frontrunner, who was uh, George McGovern. Shirley Chisholm was an incredibly strategic politician. Absolutely. I think that is the word, uh, strategy. She had a vision, and then she knew how to strategize. And I know that's one of the messages in my show. It's not about having this idea, right? You can all sit and think and and come up with um, something new, hopefully. But how do we make it happen? How How do we put it into effect? What does that take? And I know for sure Shirley had that gift. It's both a testament to her vision and also a sad comment on the United States that today I feel like she would fit right in with Ayanna Presley and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Jamal Bowman. They would be legislating and working on behalf of the people. Today, it was as if Shirley had never missed a step if she were still with us and participating. I think they stand on Shirley Chisholm's shoulders, and they would say so in a second. I love all of them you mentioned because they all have the guts to speak up and to speak truth to power and to say things that are not necessarily nicely woven and and just to have great sound bites, say things that are actually happening that need to be addressed. And, uh, you know, that is sometimes it's, it's a sad story, but we have to hear those bad stories, those true stories, those raw stories about America so we can move forward. Shirley served from 1968 to 1983. How did you choose the story that you most wanted to tell, Ingrid, in Unbossed and Unbowed? I wanted to share the private and public life of Shirley Chisholm. I wanted to show the child what she was like a chi- as a child. I wanted to show what her family was like, what were their circumstances, where did she grow up, how was she as a youngster? How was she as a young woman? Why did she make the choices she made? Um, what had influenced her? And who influenced her? I start my story when Shirley Chisholm is, is 10 years old. She returns from Barbados to Brooklyn to rejoin her parents in America. And we see the 10-year-old being sort of like, is this the American dream? Because this is what she, Everyone was saying in Barbados, you know, her parents in America, and, and they used to call her American in, in Barbados, and, you know, the good life. And they were living in a tenement building with no heat and little hot water. She left for Barbados when she was three years old. So it was seven years later, and not much changed when it came to her family's um, living and lifestyle. They couldn't save enough money to get 
a better place. They wanted a house. They wanted a brownstone in Brooklyn. That was the, the their American dream. So I show that, and I also show the father who is like a community leader, but sort of like he appointed himself this, and nobody else knows but the neighbors. And he rallies the neighbors to go to the assembly district uh, where the leaders are supposed to be representing the entire community, and he wants to tell them what's wrong. The building, the heat, the landlord isn't complying with the building code. It's not safe. There's, there's no traffic light. These are the things that are affecting our community. How can we get your help? And they would dismiss them in a minute. It's too late. Come back. We're not talking about that this, this, this week. All the things to keep them away. So he would rally the, um, the community, and Shirley Chisholm is sitting there, the 10-year-old. Instead of being in bed, she's listening. And her mom would be like, what are you doing out here, Shirley? Go right back to bed. And the, the father would be like, let her be, Ruby. What she's listening to is important. So I see her as taking or catching her father's dream. Well, I think one of her strongest political statements that I'm aware of was made when she was at the 1972 convention, and she stated, I am not here as a person of color, although I am very proud of that. I'm not here as a woman, although I am proud of that equally. I am here as a candidate of the people. She was all about the people. In one of my scenes, I have her um, when she took her campaign to, to her congressional campaign to the streets, and she's saying, "You, the people, I'm not beholden to any interest group. I'm beholden to you, the people. And he who pays the piper calls the tune. I am on bought and on bought. That that was her mantra, and that's what she lived by. Tucson's Invisible Theater presents Ingrid Griffith, starring in Unbought and Unbowed, the story of Shirley Chisholm, this Saturday and Sunday at the Burger Performing Arts Center. Ticket information and the theater's COVID protocols are available online. There's a link on the Spotlight page at azpm.org. I'd guess that almost all of us, when going through a time of difficulty or stress, have turned to a comforting piece of art to help to get us through it. Whether it is playing a beloved song over and over, or watching a favorite film on repeat, we often try to gain solace and support through the art that we love and find comforting. Alice by Heart is an ambitious musical being staged in an unusual place over the next two weekends. It tells about a girl named Alice, who is faced with heavy questions about hope and survival in a London ravaged by war during World War II. To try to make sense of this shattered world, she turns to the writing of Lewis Carroll and finds her escape in the magical realm of Wonderland. All the familiar characters are there, but what they symbolize can be quite different. I went backstage at a rehearsal of Alice by Heart to meet some of the adults and the young actors who are making this creative journey possible. My name is Caitlin Burtonshaw and I am producing Alice by Heart. So um, this play, we have 40 students that are participating in our camp and we've decided that we wanted to let as many of them shine as possible. So we created a structure that has three different casts. So every night that you come to the show, you're gonna see a different Alice, a different Alfred, a different Queen of Hearts in order to give as many children opportunities to, to shine as possible. And so right now you're seeing our Saturday night cast and we rotate throughout the rehearsals. So I come from the world of opera, and in opera we tell the same story that we've been telling for a hundred years over and over and over again. And so I'm always looking for ways to see how we can do theater in an immersive and innovative way. And so I looked at this piece and I realized that it doesn't belong in a theater. It feels so organic and real and uh, and we needed to put it in someplace different. And so I started racking my brain. I, I thought about airplane hangars and abandoned <laughs> buildings and I ended up calling the president of Larson Baker 
Um, I picked up the phone. I said, hi, I want to do a musical. Let me know if you have any spaces. And she goes, I have the perfect space for you. She goes, Bookman's just left their location on Speedway. And it's based on Alice in Wonderland. So a bookstore made complete sense. We took a tour of it within the week. And it has this absolutely gorgeous exposed brick trusses. And we, we decided that it would be the perfect setting for this show. So it would have the world of the 1940s bunker underground. I am Dennis Tamblin, and I am the associate producer and consultant on Alice by Heart. And uh, this project came to me from Caitlin as we were thinking of shows to collaborate on because we had had a very successful collaboration over the summer with uh, Mean Girls, where her voice studio and my production company worked together and we put on that show um, last summer. And so when she thought of Alice by Heart, she sent me a message and just said, listen to Alice by Heart. And within about... 30 seconds of listening to it. I was like, done. Because um, Duncan Sheik and uh, Steven Sater, who are the the librettist and the composer, they write music so special and so beautifully and just goes right into your soul. And so as within the first 30 seconds, I was like, we're doing this. Absolutely. <laughs> um, a lot of these kids already knew the show. And so um, some didn't, but they, they are in tune with some of these a little more off the beaten path musicals and they tell us about some of these shows and i look into them and go what is this this is amazing you know so um they knew the alice in wonderland story but yeah the world war ii aspect i would definitely say was something that um they needed to really connect with and figure out what was actually happening during that time so i think they're doing brilliantly and we have just an outstanding team. I could not be more grateful for our sound team, our lighting team. Everyone really believes in this project and sees um, my passion and my belief in these kids. And, and everyone is working towards the goal of making this just a really special, immersive and innovative uh, theatrical experience for the Tucson community. Hi, my name is Jade Love Leon and I play Alice Spencer. I fell immediately in love with it, the music, the story the growth and everything. There's so much variety within it. Um, just vocally, I've learned so many things already. I've been singing for a while, but through this experience, I've learned so much more. And yeah, it's just been very beautiful experience, yeah. What's something that you hope a member of the audience might take home with them in their heart after seeing this production? I hope that people will take away that it's okay to feel, I feel like in this age, it's not normalized to be human, and we're shamed for feeling how we feel, even though it's human things, and we're allowed to feel these things. So I hope we take away that with, a, we feel a little grace of ourselves after watching this amazing production. Hi, my name is Cece Harris, and I play the Cheshire Cat slash Tabitha. <laughs> and I'll, I'll start with the same question. What is something that you hope that an audience member might take away from seeing this? Um, I hope an audience would definitely take away the finality of life and the importance to live life while we can and to enjoy that life with the people around us because we only have so much time and so many places to see and go. So it's important to take advantage of that while we still can. Now the Cheshire Cat, he's a trickster. Yes. So what's something that you think you brought to the audition that helped you to get this role? In our production, Cheshire's traditionally played by a woman in Alice by Heart, so there's obviously that new sort of femininity that you have to bring to the character. There's also just a sense of nihilism and Chaos. an interesting perspective of the world from this weirdly sort of chaotically neutral individual that kind of exists in limbo. So I think just approaching her as this outsider who kind of sits on her perch and looks inward on the things going on around her was what helped me in the audition more than anything. And did you have to learn to become invisible? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Could you introduce yourself please? Hi, my name is Ashley Hanks and I play Alice. What do you like most about this role? I love the trust that Alice has of herself and that she lives inside of her body and she everything that she says and she does is so true and I think that is the beautiful thing about as she's growing up she is still in a place where she lives so heavily into her emotions and I think we really see that throughout her journey. Does your Alice ever get frustrated a little with the inhabitants of Wonderland not being 
as focused on things as she is? Oh yeah, absolutely. And that definitely plays a big part in her and the white rabbits dynamic is she becomes so frustrated because she wants to control this world and she wants to control Wonderland. And I think that is one of the hard lessons that Alice learns is that she can't control Wonderland because she can't control life and growing up for her is realizing that. My name is Jacob Toole. I play Alfred in The White Rabbit. The White Rabbit is uh, an interesting character. He is indeed. He's, he's sort of the impetus for Alice to take her trip into Wonderland. Certainly. What do you think is most interesting about playing this role? I think his complexity, because the show as a whole and the character of Alfred is all about finding hope within darkness, because the subject matter of it all is certainly not light, but the point of it is that you can find light and love, as it's a love story, within that. How would you describe the particular nature of the White Rabbit's connection to Alice in this production? Because Alice is something of a control freak. She wants to have a very rigid grip on time, on Wonderland, on everything that's happening in her life, and Alfred is slipping away. And that dynamic makes it very, very difficult for them to connect and for them to find love in each other, and yet they do. So it's very beautiful. Um, what's something that you hope that a member of the audience might take away from this production in their heart or their mind? I'd go back to the hope in the darkness thing, and I think that that is starkly relevant to everything that society has been going through recently. Um, being able to find love, being able to find life, being able to find happiness in spite of all the trouble that's surrounding you. I think that that's the message of this show, and I think that's a beautiful one. Alice by Heart, presented by the Southern Arizona Performing Arts Company, will present two weekends of performances, this Friday through Sunday and next weekend, which is January 26th through the 28th. There are specially themed tea parties held one hour before the performance to act as a pre-show discussion and prepare everyone for the trip into Wonderland. You can find photos and more details on the Spotlight page at azpm.org. Thank you for listening to Arizona Spotlight. This show is a production of AZPM. The music is by Calexico. The production engineer is Jim Blackwood. I'm producer and host Mark McLemore. Arizona Public Media's original programming is made possible in part by the Community Service Grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.